to cook, you must feel, you must, you like to do it. Uh, you must feel a pleasure of cooking something, even if you're under pressure. But what I get out of it at the end is when I look at the dishwash and the plates come out empty. You've joined us at London's Hotel Intercontinental at a lunch party for six of Britain's top chefs. The dessert, a fresh fruit and vanilla mousse with a strawberry sauce, is the choice of Michael Nadell. The reason for this dessert came from the younger people on our staff. But the question they put to me was, how easy or difficult is it to create a new dish? And we took a simple thing of vanilla ice cream and fruit salad, and we turned the mousse vanilla fruit inside, and we turned it into a, a charlotte of the sort. We call this fruity a la vanille. The colour well, is just so. wonderful. That's right. It's just wonderful. And that's how easy it was to create a new dish. Well, you're trying to tell them that actually that you can... I mean, when we talk about creation of a new dish, I mean, that they say that there's, you don't believe that you invent new things. It's just... We've taken something that was previously invented, if you like, mm. and put it into another form. Yes. Mm. Evolve, Simple evolve. as that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But the pressure to change to get exactly. new ideas must be oh. colossal. I mean, with books, with the fact that you can actually get an idea from a book, but to make something different just for the sake of being different. Mm. You want to look into the book, you're too proud to look into the book to find something. You mm. sit there and what, what, what I do, what I try to do is having two, three people around me, people are, are my key staff, and then we talk. We start talking. What would you do with we get pigeon next week, what could we do with it? And all of a sudden, within five, ten minutes, yeah. it bubbles up and you get something, yeah. something down. And I think that is interesting. Mm. Rather than you, as mm. a chef, you have to sit there and you mm. have to plan the menu, mm. uh, stupidly sit there on your own. But right. you have your many, many, other, uh, many others yeah. around yeah. you give That's you right. even better ideas because they're keen. I am very much against change for change's sake. Mm. Sure. I passionately believe that the great rest I'm talking about France now, I'm not talking about any other country in the world. The great restaurants of France have mm. grown up and developed based on a specific number of specialities. And people travel from all over the world mm -hmm. to go to those restaurants to eat those specialities. Mm -hmm. I have in mind a point. Uh, La Tour d'Argent. I mean, I can tell you many other examples. You cannot be a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. You can perfect your dishes until they're absolutely wonderful, and the time then comes to change once more in the year. an office block in White Lion Street, Islington, is the Nadell Patisserie, which operates day and night to meet the huge orders of many of London's hotels and restaurants. It's owned and run by Michael Nadell. Born in the East End of London, Michael originally wanted to be a lighterman on the barges. Instead, he followed his mother's advice and became a chef, training first at the Westminster Catering College before working his way through the pastry ranks of six of London's top hotels. His business has grown dramatically since he set it up in 1982. The grocery order speaks for itself. In one week, 650 pounds of sugar, 9,000 eggs, 130 gallons of cream, and 800 pounds of butter. Do you have to think money before you think what you'll make? No, we don't work that way here. We're much the reverse. When we, when we bring a new dish in, we'll make the recipe first and then put the price to it afterwards. 
people are often suggesting, why don't you leave this out, leave that out, and then you can sell it to us cheaper and so on. That's just not our style here. I just won't compromise. The creme patissier is one of the most important fillings in the patisserie. Like the chef would have in his kitchen, the brown stock or the white stock, the veal stock, beef stock, to us the creme patissier is the equal. And how much do you make a day? We're making 8 to 12 gallon a day on the machine. But here today we're just going to make a couple of pints. So we'll put the milk in first. And we're going to put in half a split vanilla pod. Yes, the reason we split the vanilla pod is to get the maximum flavour out. And it doesn't make little bits go into the milk? No, you just get the seeds coming out and that will give the flavour for the creme patissier. And we'll put that away to boil. Now for the liaison, we've got here sugar. We're going to break in eggs. Now we're going to beat the eggs and the sugar together. It's important to break the eggs up completely. No pieces of egg in there at all. Right, that's the eggs and the sugar, quite smooth. Right, we're now going to add the flour. Now we beat the flour into the egg mixture. Michael added a little custard powder to the flour to help both colour and consistency. That's the liaison ready now, Kay. So we'll take that over to the stove and add the hot milk to it. Right, the milk is now boiling, so we'll add half the milk to the liaison. Only half? Only half. We'll keep the other half boiling on the stove. You haven't taken the vanilla pot out, Michael? No, I leave it in all the time. I like it to infuse into the milk. And even once the creme patissier is cooked, I leave it in. It continues to give off flavour while it's sitting there. Now the liaison is going in. 